Um, someone who's uh, watched it described it as uh, the octonauts for older kids. I think that's a really good description, actually. <laughs> yeah, I think my, you know, my kids grew up with octonauts and they had all the toys in the bath and now I guess we've got toys that can go into swimming pools instead. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. what was the initial inspiration for it? What was, what was the idea? Uh, so I started off writing Star Wars, um, originally writing Star Wars comics, and I had a very young child and I realised very soon that he couldn't read them. So I was like, look, look what Dad created. Look at this Jedi being stabbed through the head. Yes. And, oh, why are you crying? Um, so I really <laughs> wanted to create something that was for him predominantly yeah. and then, you know, had another child as well. And I wanted to create entertainment that parents could enjoy with their children. Mm. Um, and so we, we created those comics uh, back in 2011 or something and it very quickly steamrolled into the TV series. Yes. All right, now look, I'm going I'm to stumble in there like an sure. ignoramus. I'm prepared to take the hit here. <laughs> Uh, for those of us who grew up with comics, that's fine. We, yep. you know, they, they've always been around. They, you know, had their apotheosis in the 50s. But it's hard for a lot of us to believe that really new comics are being written and published now yes. and bought and loved. The, the comic industry is alive and well. It is. It's massive. I mean, it's shaping everything you see everywhere. It's... it's it's shaping it's, gaming, yeah. it's shaping the programming. Yep, you look at any movie right now, and you know, I work for Marvel, I write uh, X-Men, I write Wolverine, yep. I've written yeah. Spider-Man and Iron Man and things like that, and you go to the movies right now, and that is the box office. And you have conferences like this. What you are do. we seeing, Tom? Uh, so this is a convention. Um, these are amazing things that happen all around Australia, all around the world. Um, you're probably seeing footage from Oz Comic Con, which is happening this weekend mm -hmm. in Melbourne at the Exhibition Centre. And it's just a fantastic day for families, for fans, everybody to come together and just be embrace their fandom, and it's a really welcoming environment and for it's everybody. A, it's a great chance to show and you. You can where... meet Sylvester McCoy. That was the guy <laughs> on stage then. He's a wonderful guy. Yeah, yeah. he's uh, and it's a great chance to sh showcase your wares. And speaking of which, the deep has been picked up by. Netflix. That's right. Congratulations. Yeah, oh, thank you very much. Yeah, no, we were on our second season of Netflix in the States. We're on BBC in the UK and we're on in uh, 160 territories or something around the world in all these different languages, which I don't understand and I've never visited, but I'm glad my creations have gone on there. Yeah, it's great. Um, what's, what's the change? What's the difference in terms of creative construction and, uh, and I guess, narrative construction moving from the printed page, the comic, to the animated series? Oh, look, it's, there's just a lot more people involved. So, And when I'm writing comics, it's usually myself and Edna, um, the artist, Inca, and so it's it's a very small thing, and you, you you tend to have a lot of control. Whereas once we get to something like this, you know, with this is animated in Canada, we have pre-production in Australia, we have voices in Canada, and we've got partners in Germany and LA and France, and suddenly it's this it's this really big thing. The animation world is fascinating, isn't it? In yeah. that there are these sort of these focal points, these hot centres of where animation is done particularly well. Some in Asia, and as you say, in Canada as yeah. well. Um, can Australia ever hope to, in terms of production, kind of reach that level Without as well? A doubt. Easily. Mm. I mean, we have we have fantastic creative minds here, some really good energy and really good talent. Um, and yes, I think we absolutely can be on that stage very, very soon. You're the creator of the Injustice Gods Among, Among Us series. Yes. Uh, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's 10 to 9, so most of the kiddies have gone to school now. Oh, good. We can speak about this <laughs> very dark version of the superhero story. Yes. Uh, Superman is encouraged to kill his wife and son by the Joker. He, in turn, kills the Joker. Superman becomes this maniacal despot. Yes. Metropolis is nuked. I'm very sorry. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> how did you come at it from that direction? Oh, look, I was, I was asked to do this thing. It was actually originally a game tie-in. Um, so there was a game where basically superheroes punched each other a lot. Um, and they asked for a tie-in. And it was my first time getting to write these characters that I loved. I'm a huge Superman fan. Harley Quinn, who's on screen at the moment, she's one of my favourites. And getting to write this, this comic series, which originally I think I was hired for 15 weeks. That's how long it was supposed to go for. Mm. And it was a weekly. Uh, and that was, I believe, six and a half years ago and we're still running. And I still write that every single week. Right, comics and, and the game, games associated with it? Yeah, so the games have taken their cue from the comics. Yep. So, you know, I'm, I'm writing Batman every week and Superman and these fantastic characters. I get to mm. play with the greatest toys in the world, really, yeah. as a living. So as, it's and, nice. and, and as yeah. a grown-up, exactly. Yeah, and as a grown-up, yes. Yeah, so I'm totally grown-up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we can <laughs> We can, we can tell. Man-child. Yeah. Is, is it important to you that, um, that there be positive images of women in the comics and in the series that you're involved with? Uh, without a doubt. I mean, I've just come off of a three-year run on Wolverine, and Wolverine was actually Logan's daughter. So she's been 
his daughter and I gave her a little sister. And certainly, you know, how she's portrayed is someone very, very muscular, very strong, fully covered, mm -hmm. you know, because we said, well, just because you can heal doesn't mean you like bullets tearing through your internal organs, so we'll give you bulletproof armour. Because um, you, know, you would have grown up with the comics that I grew up with where the girls right. were all just, you know, ridiculously proportioned, did nothing but yeah. stood around. Yeah, and we certainly, and we talk about, you know, we talk about now the artists particularly, we talk about what, why, what's their strength and how can we show that in their physicality. And basically a lot, they're still very well built, but basically saving the world every month involves a lot of cardio. So that's probably why it's justified. Yeah. Now it's fair to assume you're a gamer as well. I am a bit, now, so I try you, not to. How do you, but how yes, do you feel when you hear the boss of NBN finger <laughs> gamers for essentially breaking the fixed wireless internet? It doesn't really work that way. You know, you, you, you create something that's supposed to allow us to be at the same level of the rest of the world, then it needs to be at the same level as the rest of the world. They're not talking about this in other countries. They're not blaming gamers. They're not blaming people who use the internet. You know, they're not for saying... Using the for internet. using the internet. Yeah. That's right. You don't... If there's, if there's not enough water, you know, you find a way to create more water. You don't say, stop drinking. Mm -hmm. You know, this is... We should be on par with the rest of the world, and that is not the failure of gamers, that's the failure of the system. Your work relies on reliable broadband. Do you find does. that struggles at times? Do you, yeah. Does your work struggle because you may not get a proper, you know, connection or speed that you It like? does. I mean, we do, for something like The Deep, for instance, we do punch-up sessions, which are all around the world. So I play Ant, the little kid, and we, mm -hmm. we read through the scripts together with the director in Canada. And when Skype doesn't work, I mean, the whole show comes to a crunch, you know? We're sitting there, I've been on my, on my phone in my car trying to have these things because I can't get the broadband happening, you know, in my home. And what's the next project? Any new creative endeavour we might uh, not have heard of? Well, I am. I'm writing X-Men at the moment, which is fantastic. Yes. I'm writing Injustice. Uh, the Deep, I'm very happy to say we got picked up for a season three, so that'll be yep. coming to ABC next year, and that's looking incredible. Um, and, yeah, and I'm always doing lots of other things that I'm not allowed to talk about, okay. which and, is sad. And before we let you go, and spoiler alert, yep. um, the, the ending of um, The Avengers, what did it mean to you? What did it mean to yeah, me? Yeah, what's the significance? It's, it's a, the big discussion around the world, <sighs> what that ending actually I don't, meant. I, I don't want to spoil the ending for anyone who hasn't seen it. It's, look, I think this is, this, we've, this is our Empire Strikes Back. For, for yeah. my son, who's 12 years old, this is his empire. Mm. He has to sit there and watch something that's really conflicted and a bit heartbreaking, and he has to hope that his heroes somehow survive Survived. this. And I'm, I'm all there for that. I think I'm happy to torture a new audience. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's marvellous how your heroes sort of just somehow manage to come back, no matter what happens to them in the last episode. That's right. The history of comics.